welcome to my channel. I'm so happy. Do you like my new background? Eee! As you see in the title below, I am gonna dye my hair. You're probably like, whoa, Sire, you said you're not gonna dye your hair, you're not gonna play any chemicals. Like, what's up? Well, my teacher, he put me on to henna. For some reason, I didn't know about henna, but it is a safe and natural way to basically dye your hair different types of colors. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. We're just gonna jump into the tutorial and throughout the video I will update you on my life and what I've been up to and this, that, and the third. So I came across the company Henna Color Labs. No, this is not a sponsored ad. It's just something that I feel like sharing with all you beautiful consciousness because I didn't have the knowledge or the awareness of how to properly take care of my hair. But I usually do natural black right here. They give you all the instructions. They tell you the ingredients. The instructions are everywhere. They even give you a pamphlet on how to do your hair, they have shampoo, conditioner, everything else like that. They give you a coupon. After you purchase, they show you all the colors. Their website is really easy to navigate. Feel free to do your own research. Today, <laughs> I'm gonna do a pure henna. It brings out the natural red undertones in your hair. I've been doing the black, natural black since the end of last year. This is my hair right now, it's not washed. With the pure henna, I wanna see how my hair turns out and see if it works. If I like this color, then I'll stay with this color and that will be the end of my hair process. I do have another hair color that I actually want to try. It's called Wine Red. Um, I don't know how red it's gonna be. I don't know how it's gonna turn out. But if anything, if I don't like it, I can always just fill the black back on my hair and be easy peasy a lemon a skull easy. Here's their shampoo right here. I really enjoy products that are natural, 100% natural and organic. They have a conditioner right here. They have really cool, awesome bundles too, so you can really get a bang for your buck. Also have a reusable application toolkit. Is it a ponytail right now, do you see it? I know you would. The first thing you do is you shampoo your hair, no conditioner, so you can take out all the excess oils, all the dirt, so the henna can do what it needs to do and so the colors can stick. Your hair shaft can accept the henna and it can coat it. So that's what I'm about to do right now. But in this case, it'll be shampoo. Let's get to it. I'm pretty sure too, you guys know how to wash and shampoo your hair, so I'm not gonna show you this process like everyone else does. Ooh. Oh, look at the hot ponytail. She's serving elegance, sophistication. Consciousness liberation. <laughs> okay, so I washed my hair. That's the first step. Remember, no conditioner. But um, let me show you my bundles. It's beautiful. <laughs> I wouldn't change my hair texture for a thing. Melanated hair is popping and versatile. Okay, so this is my hair after I washed it with just shampoo. As you can see right here, I did the finger combing. Let me comb it with my afro pick. Now one thing that I do have to say is you can't just get any type of henna from anywhere and that's why I'm suggesting this one because I know it works. Because there's henna dyes out there that are not safe and that are not okay. They have a chemical, I believe it's called PPD. Very toxic, it can be very lethal. So do your research. If you don't go with this company, just do your research on what henna products are legit because we don't need nothing happening to you beautiful consciousness. It's actually better if you do your own research. But now that my hair is combed out, as you can see, oh, it got so long. This is about six months of hair growth and your girl was bald. Look at this comb. This is what I'm talking about. I'm gonna try to keep looking at you, but I have my little camera screen right here, so I'm gonna use it so I can part my hair. If I kinda look like I'm cockeyed, mind your business. Okay, uh, let's just start doing it like this. Switch of plans, we just go with the flow. We are gonna go downstairs into the kitchen. Why? Because now we need to do the next step, prepare the henna. So let's go. <laughs> Welcome to 
Le Casa Kichonara. I don't know. <laughs> For the second step, you'll need a pot. Why do you need a pot? Because in order to activate the henna, you need some warm water. They suggest 120 degrees. Now, I don't have a thermometer. If you are a minor or just can't trust yourself around a stovetop, ask someone who you trust and you know knows how to work a stovetop. You don't have to have the stovetop on high. You can have that thing on low. I like using spring water. I don't like using tap water because honestly, we don't know what's in tap water. All these toxins and metals and everything that they be talking about, I don't got time for it. I know when I shower and everything, that's different. You can't really go around that. But as for this, I can control this part. As the water is boiling, I'm gonna use a little plastic bowl. I wouldn't stress about what type of bowl to use. <laughs> so as the water is boiling, it's time for me to part this hair. I don't let no one touch my hair. You don't know what type of intentions people have, what type of focus, their energy going into your hair and all that. And the safest way to avoid that is to learn how to do your own hair. I advise everyone to learn how to do your own hair. If you want long hair, you have to make sure your scalp is healthy. If you have a healthy scalp, you will have healthy growing hair. And henna helps with keeping your scalp extremely healthy. Good job at sectioning my hair. So I know a lot of people who have curly hair are very hesitant when it comes to henna because it changes your curl pattern. For me, I don't see any difference with my curl pattern, but everyone is different. Once you go henna, you can't put box dyes back on it. It is a permanent process, and in order for henna to come out, you have to grow out your hair and cut the parts of the henna out. That's what I learned through researching on multiple sites. Do not be afraid to tell your hairstylist that you have henna in your hair because because if they don't know, it will completely ruin your hair. So for this one, you can see how <laughs> it's, uh, I already dyed the paper in there cause you know, you can't really keep powder sealed in. Powder is gonna go where it wants to go. So it comes with instructions. It comes with a cap, it comes with gloves. That was for the red wine. I have the pure henna right here. This is the color of pure henna. They also label it so you cannot get it confused with your other colors. So. I got my bowl, I got my henna. Cause I have a lot of hair, I'ma just pour the whole thing. I want my stuff to be fully saturated. One rule for any type of hair dye that you use, whether it's plant and natural or chemical, you start from the back and work your way to the front. Henna is in the bowl, my hair is parted. Cover the area that you're gonna be doing your hair. Like I said, they give you the instructions. We're gonna put the water into the henna bowl. So when you mix your water into your henna, you wanna make sure you do it little by little because you don't want your henna to be runny. You want it to be in a thick, pudding-like cake batter consistency. Like that. You're just gonna stir. So let me stir real quick. Also too, when you're mixing the powder, the loose powder can fly up in the air. You wanna put like a little mask on so you're not inhaling it. It's not bad, it's not harsh chemicals or anything, but it's just, you know, it can be kind of unpleasant for powder to go into your airway. What it's starting to look like. Keep on mixing it. I do have another vlog for you guys. I went to Joshua Tree and that was my first time going and it was the coolest thing ever. Can't say that everyone will have that experience because everyone is different and everyone is meant to have their own experience. It's more fun to explore the world than to be stuck on social media. That's what I've been doing. I've been exploring myself. I got back into art, y'all. I love art. I forgot how much I loved art. And so now, within my healing journey, my neo-shamanic journey, I got back into painting, drawing, and it is the coolest thing ever. Maybe I will show y'all my art pieces, but it's, it's so cool. Now that it's more of consistent, there's still like some little lumps and lumps. This is why I don't like wearing gloves because I can't feel my hair like I want to and know what's going on. So the henna isn't hot. It's warm. I actually like feeling it when it's warm. My apologies for the light, but as you can see right there, basically you are just going to saturate your hair. Don't comb through it because henna dries and you don't want to be snatching out your strands. Do this back part 
and you want to cover everything you to make sure it's super super saturated don't worry about taking forever the longer that the henna sits the more saturated it will be with color I always see that henna defines my curls after and makes it really really soft for henna it takes 36 to 48 hours for the colors to completely intensify and get if you put leave-in conditioner in you got to put um, something that's water-based and lightweight but you should avoid putting oils and everything because you don't want to strip out the henna you want it to let it coat your hair this is my first time putting henna on this <laughs> length of hair, I guess, obviously. Um, if you want, you can put coconut oil or put, like petroleum jelly um, around the perimeter of your hairline in your ears, just in case if you are susceptible to getting stains from the henna. Me? I'm like, I don't really care. One thing I realized that um, I used to do was obsess on what curl pattern I had trying to figure out what my hair is gonna look like when it grows out when really embrace the unknown embrace the process of growing your hair out embrace every single part and be patient wanting other people's hair textures and curl pattern is how you make yourself what should i say it's like self-sabotage because there's no way impossible will you ever get someone else's hair texture But yeah, trying to compare your hair texture and your curl pattern, all that stuff, to others, especially influencers or people who are going viral, it can lead to self-hate. It's just unhealthy when you should just love who you are. It can drive you crazy, like, why isn't my hair doing this? Why isn't it working? It's because everyone is different. Everyone's hair operates differently. And that's the cool part about it. Ooh, I feel like this color is gonna be cute. I don't know if I'm gonna wanna do the red. So when you put the henna on, you gotta leave it on for an hour or two. You can leave it on, on as long as you want. You rinse it out, you don't use shampoo, but you can use a conditioner to help get out the excess henna that may still be in your hair. While doing my research, I did come across people saying that henna makes their hair feel dry. There's people who put coconut milk in there. You can put stuff in your henna as long as it's natural but just do your research so it still moisturizes your hair for me i don't run into that issue i find that it moisturizes my hair and it leaves it soft and it defines my curls henna color lab this company they also have purify and detox hair mask soft and, and shine nourish and repair so i use those two you can also mix those in into your color that you're doing <laughs> she can go behind the ear. Don't mind my tattoos. I'm about to be sleeved up. Getting tattoo cover-ups is a long process because you got to allow the skin to heal before you add more things in there. So don't judge my tattoos. Just know when they're done, these things are going to be popping. I plan on doing a galaxy sleeve on one side and then the other side, I guess it's just going to be uh, animals that I, I like. So I'm in the process of getting a lion, a lioness. So that's one side right here. Now we go to the other side. Only one packet was needed for my hair. Oh, if y'all see some stubby little armpits, you need to mind your business because why are you in my armpit? Body hair is natural. I have not trimmed my hair at all. I've just been letting it grow. I think I want it to reach a certain point before I trim or dust the ends. I've noticed that henna's been helping my hair shed less. I haven't experienced any split ends too, so I was like, I don't see the need <laughs> to trim my hair at the moment. I don't be touching my hair like that unless I need to detangle it. And my go-to protective style at the moment is finger coils, and I don't separate them, I just let them sit. I wrap my hair up, I keep my hair wrapped up all the time. When I sleep, I have a silk pillowcase, so just in case if I happen to be so sleepy that I don't wrap up my hair, my hair won't get pulled out or tugged out. Oh, do I got a little mustachio? If you have a mustachio, then we are mustachio twins. 
you don't gotta do all this movement. Once you have it on and in and you feel like your hair is super, super saturated, you don't have to come through it like I am. But I like making sure that I didn't miss any spots because I cannot stand to have everything colored, but there's that one little patch that didn't get colored and I will cringe. I just really like what henna does to my hair. I like the process. It makes me feel like I'm at like a little home spa, getting my hair taken care of. It's actually really fun and cool when you learn how to take care of your own hair. Girl, I might be able to have a little low bun. So after you work it through your hair, you're gonna put the hair cap on, let the body heat from your scalp and your head, activate the henna more. Usually for me, especially with the natural black, I'll leave it on overnight or I'll leave it on for a whole day and then rinse it out and it'll be super, 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 super black. I know y'all saw the hair flip. Okay, I think I got my point across with putting this henna on. This is how much I have left over and this is from one packet. You see how it's been sitting longer so the color is changing. It's a deeper, richer color now. We're not gonna talk about what it could possibly look like to some of you who like to crack jokes, specifically poo-poo jokes. So I'm gonna throw all my stuff in there. I'm gonna clean up everything. Okay, so queso, but not cheese. Um, if this happens to stain my skin, we'll just take it as a lesson learned and then you guys get to see what not to do and what to do. Go, in the go. All right, so now that we are back in our sparkly blue rectangle, let's chit chat. It's in there heating up like a little head microwave. when you try to use a microwave and the and the bowl gets stuck so just boop, boop, boop. I don't use microwaves by the way but yeah so let me update you on what's going on if you didn't know I dropped my first debut EP called intentional um, it has a total of six songs there's California nightmare no more boss up elevation numbers and cruise control. I'm so happy with all the feedback and support I've been getting, not just in the states, but in other countries. And that is so cool and awesome because I didn't know how people would take hearing music that's catered towards the topic of healing. I have been teaching myself how to create my own beats. That being said, I did drop a couple of music videos I did no more. Remember when you held me close every night and day last time you I've been creating my own hair butter because all these chemicals and products that dry out my hair or make it feel funny, but when I use organic products that I make on my own, putting my own intentions into my ingredients and picking out the ingredients that what my hair needs. Also, maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't, maybe you heard about it, maybe you caught some wind, maybe you caught an episode or two, but I made a couple of appearances in the show Black in Compton. Um, it's been very, very, very fun. Um, <laughs> it's not my first time seeing myself on TV, but it was still, it was still cool in the sense of like trying something different outside of music you know it's cool to explore different things like don't feel like you have to stay and stick to one thing and tunnel vision that thing you can do whatever you want you're on your own time express how you want to express and explore different things be on the lookout for the newer episode you might see your girl on there my teacher the chief within my sessions he was able to tell me what foods are more balanced for my energy and what foods will hinder my energy and my vibration. So he was able to tell me that I'm allergic to peanuts. <laughs> and I didn't know I was allergic to peanut butter or like 
peanuts. So that's cool. I mean, I did notice symptoms, but I never had like the full blown typical peanut butter allergy that um, movies portray. But yeah, I've been feeling so much healthier. I've lost so much weight. For example, instead of white rice, I eat black rice. Black rice is extremely healthier for you. Um, you can order it on Amazon. Back to losing weight, it also dealt with the weight that I gained last year, dealt with all the trauma I was carrying, all of the depression. The longer I've been on my healing journey, it's already like a full-blown year in my neo-shamanic journey, um, I lost so much weight. Yeah, let me show you some pictures. Bloop. Bloop. <laughs> so with that being said, it might have caught some of y'all off guard, but um, I let go of all my past nicknames and I adopted and was given a new nickname that is very, very cool, Sire the Seer. No, it's not dark magic, it's not witchery, it's none of that. Everyone is supposed to have abilities to see the other side, to sense things, but because the foods that we eat, the programming within movies, music and everything else like that, it pulls you away from that side of you. So for the ones that are experiencing paranormal activities and everything, I've been doing um, paranormal reports with my teacher, The Chief, and his lovely wife, Miss A, she um, in paths. So it's really, really cool to see um, if you're open-minded or if you experience things with paranormal activity and you can't understand it or if people call you crazy or weird because you're saying, hey, I see this, I see ghosts, I see things moving that I can't explain and people are like, shut up, you're crazy, it's your imagination, you're not crazy. It's not your imagination. You're seeing and experiencing what you're experiencing. So for the people who have been casted out as weirdos, go ahead if you're open-minded and check out the NSTHA Paranormal Report YouTube channel. Some other individuals who are on there too that are really, really cool. Um, a young girl named Marley who is way younger than me. Like she is adorable, she's a kid, but she is not afraid and it's cool to see her to not have any fear. There's the Ricky report for the guys who want to see a male go through his own paranormal experiences because I know sometimes we need to see someone who we have similarities with. So there's the Ricker Report, Sire the Seer, and then the Paranormal Posse where it's Marlene and her mom Lucy and their good friend Tang Mo. And it's so, so cool that we're all in different parts of the world, different countries, but we all can say that we have experienced similar experiences with the other side. We also too, for the people who need proof, there is footage, there's videos, pictures of what people call ghosts and spirits that I've captured, like a skeleton in a suit, orbs, lights flickering on and off. Like we have actual documentation. So for the people who need more than just words, which I know, which is understandable, we have that. <laughs> What's cool about um, my teacher, The Chief, is that he's never made me feel weird about the things that I see or experience. He's never judged me. Um, it's a completely safe environment. And what's really, really cool is, oh, I just ran up and down the stairs. Hold on. The cool part about healing with the chief and being on my neo shamanic journey is that with me being a seer, a very intense seer, and what I experience and see on the other side daily is he teaches me how to protect myself. With all his clients and students, he teaches them how to protect themselves, not with sage or relics and fetishes and stuff like that. It's all about using your own energy, your own intentions, your own focus, your own mental fortitude. That's really, really cool. 
very, very happy. I have not experienced sleep paralysis at all because I know how to protect myself now. I was searching for many years on something to help me heal. Those who know, I've, I've tried crystals, I've tried other religions, and nothing worked for me at all. And it's not to bash what other people believe in. You do what works for you. But for me, proof is in the organic dairy-free pudding, is what I'm gonna say. Keeps his word, all about action. Thank you, Chief. Since we're here too, and we're talking about protecting energy, I would like to say I do not hug, I do not touch at all, simply to protect my energy. Nothing against no one else. So if you see me, don't touch me, do not hug me, that's it. I just don't feel the need to touch anyone to say hi or to acknowledge them. And a lot of times too, when you hug and you touch people, if you pay attention to your body, you might feel just Ugh. It's because most likely you picked up something from their energy and now it's in your energy. So what I do, and I was taught by my teacher, it's called the Y. They do it in Thailand, but it's this. From not hugging or touching anyone, I will say my energy never feels depleted and never feels tapped out. I feel amazing. So maybe you could try it too and see how it feels. Also too, for people who like to read books and you wanna know more information about my teacher, the chief and the movement, he does have a book that is on Amazon and you can get it. Yes, he is a black man, but first he's a consciousness. So respect and consideration. It'll explain the neo-shamanic movement, what is a neo-shamanic journey, the other sides, energy, everything all the questions you got the answers are within the book it's the only book i read for my healing journey and each time that i read it as i move forward in my journey i learn something different i see something new my mind processes things differently so it's really really cool within the book my teacher the chief explains things that he's experienced too because he's experienced a lot a lot a lot of deep things on the other side that people can't even comprehend so go ahead if you want to um, i'm not trying to force but i do know that a lot of you watch the paranormal reports that i do with my teacher and a lot of you have questions and because i'm still learning it's only been a year i feel like it's not right for me to explain his movement so if you want to know yourself, you can always do your research. He has a website, he has a book, more and something different, something new. And you're seeing how much I've evolved. I'm not trying to recruit anybody. I'm just sharing something that works for me, like how I shared this henna product. Simple as that. This is just from cooking my own food and healing with the chief and him pulling out all the trauma from my energy and deleting all the unbalanced energy within my body. I do not work out at all. I let go of the concept of having a big butt and being thick, but it's all about who you are as a consciousness and how you treat people and how you respect yourself. After I really let that go of being like, I need to be thick. That's what people like, being thick, having a big butt, everything else like that. I'm like, ugh, when you release it, and just embrace who you are. Work out because you want to work out and everything else like that, but do it because you want to do it. Don't do it for anyone else. Don't do it because you see the trends and everything else going on social media. It will crush you. It will crush your spirit because it is just unreasonable. Be happy with yourself. People should like you for who you are as a consciousness, not for your body, your avatar, and how it looks, the way you dress, none of that. They should like you for how you treat yourself and how you respect yourself. And when they see you respecting yourself, they should respect you. And if they don't respect you, you need to show them to the door. Simple as that. If they don't respect themselves, they're not going to respect you. Simple as that. Pay attention and observe people. That's all I gotta say. My hair. Oh, this color is pretty. It's been a full, complete hour. I'm not going to wait two hours. Now I'm going to 
rinse it out. No shampoo, I'm not even gonna do conditioner because just in case I wanna do the wine red color, I feel like I might lean towards that. My head produces a lot, a lot of heat. So it didn't dry up, but that's fine because I want an easy wash when I rinse it out. But if you happen to like your color, you can use a light conditioner to help rinse out everything. Alright. I rinsed it out. Time for the reveal. I haven't looked in the mirror. So. Do y'all see it? I don't see it. Maybe I should have left it in longer. Oh, I can see it. This is a pretty color. It's like um, a chocolate color. I'm gonna go ahead and put the wine red in because maybe it'll make it pop out more. It's still a pretty chocolate color. All right, so we're back in the kitchen. With this red, I'm gonna go ahead and put the gloves on because I don't have time to be having red hands. I'm not gonna worry about parting it. I'm gonna just do my thing. So we have the red henna packet. So this is what it looks like before you open it. I already pre-boiled my water. Lock it back up. Believe it or not, I was actually bullied as a kid for my hair texture and my hair type. Um, I would have non-melanated people <laughs> tie my hair up in knots, just talk bad about my hair, tell me I look like a slave and everything else like that. And so I was like, okay, what's the beautiful hair then? Oh, blonde hair, straight hair. This right here is beautiful. Your hair is beautiful. Don't listen to what anyone has to say about your hair. Most likely they're probably just hating and they want your hair. And that's why I'll leave the house walking around looking like this. Cause what, say something. To not care what people think, to do what you want to do based off of what you want to do and not other people's opinions is freedom. So this is what it looks like. I put the soften and shine, the nourish and repair. Okay, so now that my water is warmed up, you can kind of see the steam. I'm gonna go ahead again, put it in the bowl and mix it till it's a cake batter. So now that I mixed it, this is the color and the shade of the wine red. So I feel like I fully saturated my hair with this color. I scraped the bow. I'm gonna leave this in. I'm gonna try to push for three hours, but I'm not gonna let y'all just sit here for three hours. We're not gonna do that. So I guess this one does stain. Yeah, this one stains. I'm gonna like an unplugged lace front. Maybe I should have put. Okay, so if you do a color like this, the wine red, put some petroleum jelly or some coconut oil so you don't get stained. Because no one wants to look like an Oompa Loompa. And if you do, that's your thing. Nothing against you. Just me, no. Now that it's on, I'm gonna put my plastic cap on to circulate that heat. Hold this part here so I can bring my little ear out. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and try to make my sushi rolls. I gotta defane the wild caught shrimp. If the recipe is jumping, I'll do a cooking tutorial for y'all. Cause I do have my chef hat and my apron. Just know, it gets real. I'm back. 
I just took a shower. It is the complete next day. I ended up sleeping with the henna on. I had to sleep with a beanie on because... It was dripping. Yes, it's safe to leave it on overnight. It's just up to you and you just, if you wanna be comfortable or not. I slept pretty good, but I did wake up to like some stuff in my pillowcase cause it was oozing out. Let's see how it came out. Oh, oh okay. You see it? I had to put paper towels this morning cause I woke up to some blobbery. I don't want a big clump of henna to come out and be on the carpet. Because this is the last color, my last application of henna, when I rinse it out um, and the water is finally running clear, I'm gonna put conditioner in. I washed out all of the remaining henna um, with just water, no shampoo, and then after with their conditioner. Let's see, what is it? So with henna too, it takes up to 48 hours for the color to come out more, but I like this. I finger combed through my hair when using the conditioner, you can see. And it stretched my curls out longer. I just really like doing henna mask, it's so much fun. But I think I'm gonna keep using the wine red color so it can get more vibrant and so my hair can get used to that color. I'm also probably gonna be mixing in some beet juice cause you know how beets stain. So it can be even more vibrant. So let me finish the complete vision that I have. because usually it would be just finger waves, or that's it. <laughs> so um, I get super, super shrinkage. As you can see, I kind of picked it out a little bit. Um, I didn't put any gels or like any super cast on there to keep my curls super defined. So when picking it, I had to be careful because the curls were just poofy, super, super poofy. Besides the hair butter that I make, other two hair companies that I like, well just these products I should say, that work for my hair because I noticed that other curling products do damage to my hair, but I found that these three items from two companies really moisturize my hair to find my curls, but then don't leave it feeling like brittle or like this breakage. As I am double buttercream, it's a great moisturizer for me. You're not supposed to put anything in your hair after because I'm like, let me get cute because I want to see it bled because of the product. So now my fingers are stained from doing my finger coils. I also like Maui Moisture Hair Styling Flexi Hold. This one is really cute and fun. The Long and Luxe Pomegranate Passion Fruit Grow Yogurt. Grow Yogurt? Grow Yogurt by um, As I Am Too. It's new. It's different for me growing up my hair and doing curly hair, but I like it. I love it. It's fun. I like this color. My shirt is from Zara. My pants are from Urban Outfitters. Um, yeah, so I'm about to go get some pictures right now. I'm feeling really, really cute with my little teeny weeny afro. Thank you, beautiful consciousness, for watching my video and coming to my channel. See you next time.